so is this. This is Toronto. And this too. And this. And this. And this again is Toronto. Almost 3 million people who play host to over 16 million visitors every year. Canada's largest, most exciting, dynamic city. Toronto is all of this and more. Toronto is a city much like Canada itself. Diversity and contrast are everywhere. Victorian architecture alongside the latest in high tech. Street signs that recall the British monarchy, the Far East, and the Aegean. Spacious parklands just minutes from the thriving core of a national shopping mecca. The conservative and the eccentric. And above it all, the tallest freestanding structure in the world, the CN Tower. For many visitors from around the world, the tower has become virtually synonymous with Toronto itself. It can be seen from literally anywhere in the city, dwarfing the surrounding downtown skyscrapers. It's a contrast that testifies to Toronto's relatively youthful status as a world-class centre of business, culture and entertainment. This is our fast speed that we're going, just 20 feet or 6 meters per second. And altogether, our trip up to the restaurant takes about 60 feet. The total height of the tower is 1,815 feet, 5 inches. It houses the world's highest and largest revolving restaurant, a popular discotheque, and three observation levels. On a clear day, not only can you see the whole city, you might also be able to tell if you left the lights on at home. The newest arrival on Toronto's skyline might be a little less visible, but it's every bit as distinctive. It's the world's famous Sky Dome. Opened in June of 1989, the Sky Dome is the world's first truly indoor-outdoor stadium, thanks to the ingenious retractable roof design. The Dome is home to Toronto's beloved Blue Jays baseball team. With a seating capacity of over 66,000, the world's biggest video scoreboard, and a 350-room luxury hotel overlooking the playing fields, it's easy to see why Torontonians think that when it comes to stadiums, the Sky Dome's the limit. On the eastern side of the CN Tower is the Metro Convention Centre, one of the finest of its kind in North America. Opened in 1985, the facilities include a theatre to seat 1,400, a ballroom, 40 different meeting rooms, and enough floor space to keep more than a few football teams happy. While the Metro Convention Centre aims to make your business a pleasure, the most popular attractions in the city make it their business to bring you the simple pleasures of just having fun. Which leads us, and several million others, to Ontario Place. Here you'll find a dome theatre where the movies are six stories high. An amphitheatre featuring everything from circuses to symphonies and rock concerts on a revolving outdoor stage. Pleasant diversions for grown-ups and little tykes too. Ontario Place is 96 acres of excitement, education, entertainment and relaxation, all brought together with spectacular results.
Crossing the bridge from the man-made islands of Ontario Place will take you straight to the Canadian National Exhibition, otherwise known as the CNE, or simply the X. Held each year in late August, the X is the biggest exhibition in the world, with rock concerts, exhibits, air shows, and Canada's largest midway, all ready to spark up your summer. Hockey fans are invited to visit the Hockey Hall of Fame on exhibition grounds, where the history and highlights of the NHL are all on display. The X is also an important part of Toronto's history. It not only dates back to 1879, but just outside the stadium, this obelisk marks the site of one of Toronto's first permanent settlements, Fort Louis, established by French traders in 1750. For modern day explorers of all ages, there's a special spot just outside the city where you can ride a wild beast, brave the whitewater rapids, stand up to the law of gravity, and conquer a towering man-made mountain. It's all in a day's adventure when you discover the country's number one theme park, Canada's Wonderland. Lions and tigers and bears, and camels and monkeys and lizards, oh my! There's so much to see at Toronto's famous Metro Zoo. You have to have a pretty good memory just to keep track of it all. If you're the kind that prefers computers to cockatoos, the Ontario Science Centre is for you. Push, play, touch and see for yourself. The mysteries of science come to life in over 500 fascinating hands-on exhibits.
In addition to the Science Centre, Toronto has several other excellent museums to inform you. The Royal Ontario Museum, known as the ROM, is the largest public museum in Canada. It features extensive displays of Canadian history, dinosaurs, Egyptian and Greek relics, and one of the finest collections of ancient Chinese artifacts to be seen anywhere on the continent. The world's largest public collection of the works of Henry Moore can be seen here at the Art Gallery of Ontario in downtown Toronto. The permanent collection includes over 10,000 works by various artists, including noted Canadian painters Alex Colville, Emily Carr, and the Group of Seven. But some of the nicest landscapes in the city aren't found on the gallery walls. High Park is just one of Toronto's many scenic park areas. It's also the biggest and probably the only one where you can make friends with a yak. Flower lovers will appreciate Allen Gardens, a greenhouse and park that added a generous touch of colour to the downtown area. And if the downtown pace is faster than you prefer, Toronto's beaches offer you a 20-kilometer jogging trail, a quiet stroll on the boardwalk, or as much as you'd like of sun, sand, and scenery. When it comes to the serious business of picnics, frisbees, and deep contemplation, the city's leading leisure experts can usually be found here, on Centre Island. Access to the island is provided by ferry boats, and when the sun is shining, it's men, women, and children first. When your ferry docks on the mainland, that's no reason to assume the party's over. Just a few steps away, you'll find one of the most popular waterfront attractions of them all. With everything from music, theatre and dance performances, to craft displays, art exhibits, festivals and a sprawling antique market, you'll soon realise that your ship really has come in. To Harbourfront.
visitors to Toronto quickly discover just how many places there are to see. And the next thing they learn is that half the fun is getting there. Trolley cars first began rolling through Toronto's downtown streets in 1892, having debuted at the Toronto Exhibition of 1883. Perhaps the city's most visible contrast of old and new, cars recalling the 1920s carry passengers past sights and sounds that speak only of the present, and sometimes even the future. Street West is a creative capital for all of English Canada. Galleries, boutiques, cafes and nightclubs provide a showcase for the emerging generation of Canadian artists and artisans. The streetcar in West Dundas travels through what would appear to be another country altogether. Shop windows, street signs and passers-by all seem to speak a foreign language. And as a matter of fact, they do, because you've arrived in Toronto's Chinatown. When the streetcar stops at Dundas and Young, you're not only at one of the busiest intersections in town, you're also at one of the biggest, most talked about shopping centers in the country, the Eaton Center. Young and Bloor Streets, Toronto's two major arteries, intersect at the heart of the sophisticated uptown shopping district. Those in search of the exclusive usually find it in the fashionable shops, restaurants and boutiques of nearby Yorkville. Try this out. A nice spiked Jill Havari here. That's a good one. That's it. How much you like, my friend? Um, about no, five pounds. Five pounds worth? Okay. While the folks at Kensington Market may not be experts on fashion, they certainly know their way around a sale. Right. Okay, Toronto's right. cosmopolitan makeup is on full display at the market. Vendors from all over the world conspire to tempt you with free samples and mouth-watering aromas. The St. Lawrence Market is found indoors near the waterfront on East Front Street. The site is important to historians as well as shoppers as it's a reconstruction of Toronto's first Civic Hall, dating back to 1850. Toronto's past is as colorful as its present, and of the many historical sites within the city, one of the most exciting is Fort York. The fort was established in 1793 by John Graves Simcoe to protect the town that was then known as York. During the War of 1812, Fort York was occupied for four days by American soldiers. Before the British troops could drive them off, 
they had set fire to many of the town's original buildings. In 1834, the town of York was officially renamed the City of Toronto, a name taken from the Iroquois, meaning the meeting place. Ontario's earliest days can today be experienced firsthand at Black Creek Pioneer Village. landmark you're likely to see is Casa Loma. This 98-room medieval castle was built in 1911 by the incurably romantic Sir Henry Pellet. Though it's now in the heart of the city, the castle was originally built as a hunting retreat, far away from the busy downtown streets. Back then, Toronto was known as Toronto the Good and the City of Churches. Several of the city's downtown cathedrals date back to the 19th century, when the city was a Puritan community that all but closed on Sundays. Today, however, it's a very different story. First-class restaurants and enough nightclubs to keep you dancing till dawn. After dark, Toronto the Good becomes Toronto the Great. For those who like to be entertained in the grand style, you'll find everything from Broadway to Beethoven in any one of Toronto's outstanding theatres and concert halls. way to spend your evening in Toronto is to simply relax and enjoy the view. Like Canada itself, this is a city of enduring charm and compelling beauty. Just as millions of people visit Toronto each year, millions more return. Centuries ago, the Indians named it 
the meeting place. Nothing could have been more appropriate.